Our lesson today is entitled The Word of God. It's found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13, all the way through to chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. This is Sunday School Lesson for August the 4th, 2024. My name is Tony Miller. Well, and our key verse is found in the 13th verse of the text, and it reads as follows. And we also thank God continually because when you receive the Word of God, again, the Word of God, our subject, which you've heard from us, you accepted it, not as a human word, but act as the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. Again, that's again, the word of God is our subject. Next slide. So the aim of this lesson is to understand what is meant by the word and to realize the importance of knowing who we are and how we became who we are. Uh, in facing hostility and embrace the special connection we share in Christ's holy church. Again, it's my YouTube channel. As you please hit the subscribe button and notification bell and you get my lessons automatically. Please like my lessons and share my lessons and leave me comments. All of these things continue to encourage me to share this work with God. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're grateful that you've given us another opportunity to hear a word from you, Lord, and we're grateful what the Apostle Paul would, would share with us this day. Right now, we ask forgiveness of our sins, wash us and make us worthy vessels to be used by you. We surrender our will to you at this moment. Lord, use us as your humble servants as we would share these words amongst ourselves. Lord, give us wisdom and, and understanding to, to, to share this word without error. We pray that the Holy Spirit will guide and direct our journey as we make this journey today inside of your word, understanding your word, the word God is our sub subject. In Jesus' name we do pray and ask always. Thank you so much. So again, I give you background that leads us up to the lesson. Again, the church age is underway. And and men have encountered this Jesus and they're saved from their sins. And Peter and 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 uh Peter and 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 uh Paul, they now will will, will teach the word of God. And Peter was uh and his uh and, and James and so were, were, were for the Jews and, and Paul and his folks were for the Gentiles and they preached this gospel, right? And Paul and Silas, they formed churches in the region and especially in Thessalonica, where we are, where our letter today, they had a great persecution in Rome, they were jailed, uh, Peter's jailed in uh, AD 44, the Christians were spilled from Rome for five years. And notably Paul would write the letter to the churches to Thessalonica in 51. AD. That's how we've gotten to our point today. Let's move on more background as we get a better understanding to frame this lesson. Amen. So this is a timeline that I've shared with you so many times of the life of the Apostle Paul. And, and again, here where we are today is in the second uh, missionary journey that, 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 that Paul would, would journey on to, um, to um, the church at Thessalonica, and, and, and again, that he would write these letters to these churches here again about 51 AD. Just some perspective, again, framing the lesson for us. Amen. And again, Paul on this second missionary journey that he would journey around, I mean, from uh, uh, from uh, Jerusalem all the way through up into uh, Philippi, where we'll we'll talk about that in our lesson, and then and then, and then then up into uh, uh, Thessalonica, where we are today, and he will ha travel on to Berea and ultimately to Corinth, where where he would be writing this lesson back to the church at Thessalonica. Just give you some perspective of how this all fits together for us. Amen. So Paul wrote Thessalonica, he wrote it, him and along with Silas and Timothy, and it was written to the church of Thessalonica, some Jews and prominent women who were Greeks. And again, we're in chapter one, it's basically just an introduction to the rest of the letter that he wrote to us. But again, it has something significant for us and I hope you'll get the understanding of that today. A little bit more background as we get into our lesson, amen. 
So setting from Philippi, and this is kind of where I'm going to frame it from. That's why I share with you the map that begins in Philippi <clears throat> on Paul's second missionary journey. That in, uh, we find this out in Acts uh, 16, 6, beginning at verse 16. That, that, that Paul and, 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 uh, and Silas were, were there in Philippi. And then, and then once we were uh, going to a place of prayer. And we, met, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit. And again, she was possessed by a spirit, no doubt, by which she predicted the future. And that's the thing about it. When you deal with the with the uh, the other side, they have powers that are that are that are uh, unfamiliar to us. That's what they call them, unfamiliar spirits, right? And she was able to predict the future, and she earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling, right? And she followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. Again, she had the ability to speak the future. And she kept up. She kept this up for many days. <clears throat> Excuse me. And finally, Paul came. Pa Paul's was so annoyed and he, and he turned around and said to the spirit that was in this uh, young woman, this slave, and he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the spirit left her. And again, she lost her abilities and she could not no longer fortune tell. And when her owners realized that their hopes of making money were gone, they realized and they, they, were, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. And, and they, 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 they brought them to the magistrates and, and said, these men are Jews and are, are throwing the city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept our practice again. They're just speaking the gospel, but again, they would execute the power of God, casting out the demon out of this female slave. That's what we got in here. Let's move on about our narrative and get to our lesson. And you probably no doubt heard this message before at midnight. Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and, and the other prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And at once the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains loosed and the jailer woke up. And, 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 then, so, and then he saw the prison doors open and he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. You're all here, you know, this narrative that puts you framing this lesson today about the Philippian jailer and how we get into our lesson today. Amen. And because of all this ruckus here and, and they would they would leave Philippi heading to Thessalonica. Show you the map in relationship to Thessalonica and Philippi and also Berea and Corinth again places that will journey along our message today again Macedonia and Acacia as well just some perspectives I share with you in the map it's always important and they had to Thessalonica to preach the gospel and they're only there for three weeks three weeks that's all before they get kicked out of there too, uh, on Paul's journey to Greece, it was uh, Timothy and Silas and they accompanied Paul to Thessalonica. Now it's, it's Paul, Timothy, and Silas, right? And 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 again that um, um, Paul, Timothy, and Silas so accompanied them there. And upon arrival, they finally get there. Okay, and after leaving, getting kicked out of Philippi, they arrive. In, uh, in Thessalonica, and they visit the chief Jewish synagogue uh, for three Sabbaths. That's all they get there, three weeks. That's it. Explaining why the Jews, uh, why the Jesus is the Old Testament Savior, again, preaching the gospel. Focus on the resurrection of Christ. And after hearing Paul's message, many joined Paul and his companions. 
but others were in upheaval. Again, about Paul was preaching, he led a mob starting within the city and soon went after Paul and Silas and Timothy, resulting in them later escaping the city under the cover of the night. The Jews uh, did not like what Paul was doing. They, uh, again, that, that, that he was kicked out of Philippi and now kicked out of Thessalonica, only there for three weeks in Thessalonica, again, sharing how we've getting to our lesson today. Amen. But in three weeks, they make enormous progress, planting churches and spreading the gospels. This is where our lesson takes place. They're in the re region for a while and Paul hears the good news. And the apostle Paul decides to write letters to the churches there. It's been there for now a couple of years. Again, he's hearing great things from the church. Again, that was planted for just a brief period of time, but they have done what required of taking the gospel to the other most parts of the earth. Amen. So in Paul's first letter to the church, we not only comforted with the struggling believers, but also offered encouragement because they were still experiencing threats and other type of harassment because of their faith in God and just like he is he was and, and his team was as as well that that these 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 uh these believers in Thessalonica they have to deal with those Jewish people as well however they also had false teaching they were were causing problems for this infant church because the inc incorrect information about Jesus second uh coming spread and it caused some to quit their jobs and become idle and that's kind of how what happened with Jim Jones you know, those people all went to Jonestown, Guyana, waiting for Jesus' return. At least they were all following the man. Same thing with the Hell Bob comet. You know, you get a bunch of different cults you've heard of, of stories where they're all waiting for the return of Jesus. And they're just sitting around waiting, thinking it's so imminent that their idleness bred the sinful conduct of the people. And thus Paul needs to write this letter to give them some measure of correction, but also give them some measure of praise and that's where we take up this lesson today amen so paul silas and and, and timothy send greetings to the church of Thessal of the Thessalon thessalonians uh, expressing gratitude to god for their faith their love and their hope in christ and this uh this epistle would represent the first epistle that Paul would write in the New Testament. Chronologically, it may not be in the book, in the in the Bible that way, but it is considered the first epistle that Paul would write in the New Testament. Amen. Again, visible in our text, Apostle Paul recognized and highly praised the Thessalon Thessalon uh, Thessalonians for their response to the gospel message. They were serious, right? They spread the gospel. They turned away from idols. They did the work, the good news of salvation. They they heard it. They believed that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They turned away from their idol worship and sin to serve God seriously. They had love. They their, their love produced work and the faith and endurance and hope in the face of opposition. They had the opposition of those Jews as well looking forward to the soon return of Christ as we all do this same thing. They were visible to God because of what they did. Amen. They're not trying. And that is our background. About 15 minutes, I know it's a lot, but you'll see as we frame, it, it frames the lesson very well. And I just hope that you get some value from all of that that I did to lead us up to this lesson amen so that was our background and and you know me i i, I cannot just start you in the uh, middle of a chapter and i have to give you some measure of the the text that would be the on ramp into this text so i will provide you with at least the first 10 verses that will lead us up to this 
text. Again, Paul and, and, and Silas and Timothy, they were examples that that, that, that we, we learn here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And, and again, beginning here in, in, in verses 1 through 7, for, and, and Paul says, As for you know, brothers and sisters, that our visit to you was not without results. That again, that they were there for a brief period of time. And we had previously suffered and been treated outrageously in Philippi. As you know, that, uh, that with the help of God, and there to tell you in the gospel, uh, uh, and that tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. Jews didn't like us there. They didn't like us here in Corinth. They didn't like it. They don't like us where we are in Corinth, but they didn't like us there in Philippi, and they don't like us there in Thessalonica. For the appeal we make does not spring out of error or impure motives. We are not trying to trick nobody. On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God, approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God alone, who tests our hearts, verse five. And you know, we never use flattery, nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed. Again, we're here just briefly, right? Uh, for not from you or anyone else. And, and even through the apostles of Christ, we could have asserted our authority that we're that we could have said, "Hey, they like recognize who we are. We're we're uh, ordained apostles. We 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 we." And that Jesus called me out on that road to Damascus. He could have told that story, but that's not what he did. He did not assert any any apostolic uh, apostolic authority. He had instead, we were just like young children among you. That's what uh, Paul writes back to this church, uh, recanting their. The relationship that, that Paul and Simon, Simon and Timothy had when they're there the last time. Amen. And verse 9, and how we can thank God enough for you in return for all the joy you have in the presence of our God because of you. Because we, we've heard about your witness and what's happening there. And, then, and, and and day and night we pray most earnestly that we may see you again. And supply what is lacking in your faith. Again, that's why Paul would constantly write these letters, these epistles. And he would write them to encourage folks. He would write them to give them an attaboy. He would write them to build them up in the faith. And, and again, and he's writing this letter and he says that, that, that I, I, I want to see you again. I earnestly want to say, I'm praying for you. I want to earnestly see you again. That whatever you're lacking, I want to make sure you have it to build you up in the faith. So let's move on to our text now. Amen. So our subject again is the word of God, and it's uh and and it's uh, we're in First Thessalonians, and I gave you the first ten verses. We begin here at verse uh and verse uh, thirteen, and then we will move on to chapter three in the first three verses of chapter thirteen. I'll give you the NIV as the backdrop again, uh, giving you some uh, uh from what I think the text will give us the most understanding, uh, and begin here in verse three. Again, Paul is thankful that. They welcomed the gospel message and not man's message. That's what he's trying to remind them. And then verse 13, and, and we also thank God continually because when we receive the word of God, uh, when when you research, receive the word of God, remember they were just there briefly. That was that you heard from us. You accepted it. And that's what we do again when we hear God's word and we, we hear it preached and we hear it taught or we hear, hear it in speaking, we hear it in witnessing that, that that's what happened, we received the word of God and you accepted it, not as a human word. And, and that's the problem I have here, you know, people say, well, you know, I read the Bible from cover to cover, but they read it like a human word and that's not, what, that's not how you read the Bible, but it actually is the very word of God. That's how you have to embrace the word, which is indeed at work in you now who believe because what happens when you when you turn the word into a, the word of God and not some novel about man's writing, you believe that it came from the very word of God, then it changes. And, and, and now that word of God, which is our subject, becomes at work at you and that word of God they're speaking about is this gospel that they are now 
preaching, the Great Commission that they were all entrusted with to go and make disciples. That's the call that Paul and Simon and Simon and, T and Silas and Timothy had on their life. Let's talk about this word of God, this gospel. Next slide. The gospel according to Jesus Christ. That is that this, this word, this gospel. And again, that John, oh, the writer, uh, the gospel, the apostle, he, he begins in John 1, 1. And he says that in the beginning, and I give it to you in the Greek. I love this. And I've shared with this many times as well. That in the beginning, in the beginning of time, in the beginning when there was nothing before there was time, there was God, the word. The word that the word their word was present. The word of God is our subject in, and that word is Jesus, right? And in the beginning there was Jesus. Jesus was there, and that word was with God. That very word in the bosom of the Father before the foundation. The word that very word that spoke, let there be, and was what not that became, right? That that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. John one and one. And, and and this one, Jesus, that word, that word that was there in the beginning was with God. And all things through him came to be because the Jesus said that everything came into being by the word. God spoke it. Let there be, let there be the, the galaxies, uh, the, 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 the earth, the, 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 all of the complexities of our planet. Our atmosphere, our plants, and all that all they come to being. The planets way before the galaxies, way up the first heaven, the, the second and third heavens, all. And nothing came to being without him, Jesus. None of that came to be without the very word of God speaking it, and it became, and it came not one thing which has come into being. Everything came into being by Jesus. Again, it's a gospel that, that Paul would no doubt tell these people that, again, this is how the gospel began. And everything, and in him, in Jesus, there was life. And life was a light of mankind. And, and the light that shine that, that Jesus shines in the darkness. And the darkness cannot overcome this Jesus. You know, cannot overcome this gospel message. It cannot come overcome what, what happened is that when man lost their way in, in, in the garden and God would, would set in motion events that will all culminate with this gospel, that Paul would tell them about the, the gospel. And that's the power, the word power is in the word of God. It's not the power in Tony. It's not the power in the preachers. It's not the power in the teachers. It's not the power in the apostles. The, the power is in the word of God. And he will tell them, no doubt, as he spread this gospel, how this, this Jesus would be prophesied throughout time and, and he would ultimately come onto the scene. And for 30, he would be on the planet for 33 and, and a half years. And he would he would shed off his, his, his deity and he would take on a tent of human flesh. And, and for 33 and a half years that, that he would be on this earth. And for three and a half years that he would proclaim this word, this gospel the words of God that we share, that again, that that's what he was saying as he would proclaim that gospel to those folks in Thessalonica. He said he didn't come in here with fancy words, all this stuff, just telling the truth, just speaking the gospel, just like we speak it in regular words. And it's Jesus that he would, he would, he would, he would do these these miracles and and he would do all these things and proclaim all these things and he he would tell people about how he's gonna he 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 was gonna be sin sacrificed for humanity and he would die on the cross, but again that he would not stay in that grave they would be revived and he would and in three days he would come back alive and be witnesses among people all in Jerusalem at 500 at one time and he would go on to tell about what's happening in the gospel and to tell about his condition and what happened to Paul on the road to Damascus and he would tell them about this gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what Paul said, I didn't come to you with flattering words, I just told you about the story. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Next slide. And I share with you that it's not with the human word. That's what I'm trying to share with you. That's not that the, that the wisdom of the world is foolishness to God. It, that all of you think that these political people and and and, and, and business people and, and 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 even religious folks that they don't have no power. The power that's all foolishness. That's all a human word. For the foolishness of God, if there is such a thing, is wiser than human wisdom. 
and the weakness, if indeed there is any weakness of God is stronger than any human strength, and that, that man-made human, human wisdom is has no, has no, can't, can't even cut, get a glimpse of the power and the wisdom of Almighty God. That's what Paul would again would foretell, foretell to these people that it's not about the humanity. I didn't come with you with human words and with human wisdom. I came with you to the with the word of God. Again, the subject of our text. Amen. The word of God, first Thessalonians, Thessalonians uh, and we go at four, verses 14 through 16. For you, brothers and sisters, again, Paul is, is, is talking back to those folks in, in Thessalonica where he had been and only for a few, for a brief moment, but they have now have caught the gospel and they're thriving, but they're having some measure of opposition. And that's what he's, he's writing the letter back and hopefully to encourage them and build them up and exhort them as well. And again, what happened, you brothers and sisters became imitators of the churches in Judea. And that's what I shared with you before that, that a lot of people, they, they, they will never set their foot in the church. They never read a Bible. They'll never read they, because we become imitators of those who've gone before us, so our mother and our father, and they show us what, what God is. They show us the power of God. They show us the word of God by their living it. And they became Im imitators of God churches in Judea, which are, Christ, which are in Christ Jesus. And you suffer from your own people, the same thing that those churches suffered from the Jews, just like that we did. We got kicked out of there, right? Just like the other, them Jews are horrible up there in Corinth in Cor and, 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 and Thessalonica, and who killed the Lord. And, and, and again, what he's saying about that history in verse, in verse 15, that who killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and drove us out and they ple displeased God and are hostile to everyone. Those Jews were once the ones who were in position and power. The scribes and the Pharisees were greatest. Everybody knew who they were, like share with you, like cheers. Everybody knows their name they had on the cool clothes and all that. And now they're being supplanted. And, and now this gospel is spreading throughout these regions. And, and, they, and, 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 uh, kill, and, and they displeased God and, and they hostled everybody. In verse 16, in their effort to keep us we mean speaking to the Gentiles. They don't even want to speak to the Gentiles that they may be saved. In this way, they keep they heap their sins uh, up in a in, to the limit, and the wrath of God will ultimately come upon them in the last. That's what Paul is saying. That he says, "Remember, I was only there for three weeks before he and his team got kicked out of there by those Judaizers." Again, Paul is saying that because they were hostile and because there's that, uh, let's move on to the next slide. Let me magnify a point. Amen. This is when the Paul did not or did not want to visit Thessalonica again. He was in Corinth doing the work, and that was part of. But it was, but is that is uh, that Satan had hindered him, and the, and the, and the and the issues and the and the uh, political people and the, and the obstacles that are all being thrown in their way and being able to go back to Thessalonica in order to be there in person, like he says, but Satan hindered Paul and his associate and Paul assured the Thessalonica that his desire was to be with them, but he was hindered by Satan. And that that happens again and again and again and again. I know that we when we have obstacles in our life, we have to recognize it's not the people that are causing us to grief that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and the powers and the rulers of this archaeology. Say Satan don't want Jesus to, he don't want Paul to spread this gospel. He doesn't want it to go. And, and, and it will set every obstacle in his way. And it will set every obstacle in our way in order for us to do the same, to, to execute our call, the great commission to take the gospel to the uttermost parts of the world, Ephesians 6 and 12. Let's move on to the text, amen. The word of God in Thessalonica, verses 17 through 20, which is, these are the last few verses of our text. I know it went kind of fast and furious in this lesson, but a lot of it, what led up to it is, 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 what, is what, 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 what gives us an essence of where we are today. And he says in verses 17 through 20, and then we'll jump to chapter 3, we only have three verses. But we, brethren, having been taken away from you, Paul, again, like he said, he's in Corinth, 
for a short time in, in, in presence, but not in heart. He still, I have a heart to be with you. And, and, and I, but he says, that, he said, endeavor more aggressive, eagerly to see you face to face with desire. That's what he's saying here. And therefore, we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and time again, but saying, hinder us all the principalities and powers don't want us coming back there. And again, we were there. They did everything they did to kick us out in only three weeks. But then what is our hope? Our joy and our crown of rejoicing is not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we don't see you, we don't make it now, we will see you at his coming. You are our glory and our joy again that we can we can tout about uh, the success of just in a brief period of time and the gospel is thriving there in Thessalonica and, and Paul is happy about that. He says you are our glory and our joy about what you did. Paul having all of these gospel, all these obstacles that gives us a break between chapter two and chapter three. And I'll give you that bridge in the next text between what happens next. Amen. The apostle Paul says, he's, I'm not defeated though. You know, even I got the principalities and the powers uh, that, 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 that's, that's, that I got them and the Satan and all of the obstacles that I'm having to Paul. He says, I'm not gonna be defeated. I got options. And that's what Paul is trying to say to him in writing this letter. And he says, he says, he has the power of God on his side. And that's what he, that's what he wants to say. I'm not, I'm not defeated, even though I'm having these issues that I share with you and these the texts that are leading up to us. And he sent them the next best thing. Again, they're not taking me. They know who I am. They know the, the story about me is a, and, the, and, the, and those Jewish leaders, those Judaizers know that I was a Pharisee of Pharisees. I was a, I was a super Jew and they, and they don't want me there, but I got a young guy. And they, they don't know that much about him and I'll slide him in there. And the next best thing he says is my favorite protege, Timothy. I'll send him back to you there in Thessalonica. Paul said, I'm never defeated. <clears throat> I got the power of God on my side. The word of God for the people of God. Let's move on to chapter three. Amen. The word of God. And I'm giving you the first three. This, these next three verses, the last three verses of our printed text. And so when we could stand it no longer. Again, Paul cannot stand what hearing the the words that are coming back to him from Thessalonica, and we thought it best to be left uh, to be left ourselves in Athens. That's where he is in Athens, Corinth, right? That he's got a great work that he's doing there in Corinth, and he and he said, "I know that you got issues over there, but I'm gonna send you the next best thing." We sent Timothy, our brother and co-worker in God's service, in spreading the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you in your faith. God, Paul said, I got a secret weapon. I got somebody that's gonna come in there that's gonna do what I cannot do at this moment so that no one would be unsettled by these trials that you guys are dealing with, those Judaizers, those religious leaders, the, pre the principalities and the powers and the rulers in this dark age and those regional religious and political powers that you're dealing with for you know quite well that we are destined for them, that that's opposition is what we will face. Let's share with you this, uh, a, a couple of cells to close out this lesson, amen. That again, we are called the word of God is this subject that we have been talking about all this period of time. We are call, all called to spread the word of God. Again, our subject matter. That's that gospel of Jesus Christ, that great commission. And, and we will all face oppositions, the principalities and powers. Every time you get ready to share the gospel, there'll be somebody saying, what are you talking about that churchy stuff? You will, you will, you know, you will be a witness and they will have some something to, in order to, 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 to try to oppose what you're saying about your, your witness. And, and that's what we all will deal and face with. And that's what Paul was dealing and facing with us. But we all have this commandment that there's one thing we have to do as children of Almighty God, as believers in Jesus, as Christians, 
and that's that great commission that told us therefore we would go and we'll make disciples of all nations, sharing our word, sharing our story, sharing this word of God. The power is not in any of us. This power is in the word of God. You can tell people about your testimony, but the power is in the word of God, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And again, verse 20, and teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you, as Jesus will say to us all. And Lord, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. Jesus is here with us. Paul was hoping to be with his people more. But again, his goal was to, was to spread the gospel. And he had done it there for three weeks in, in, in Thessalonica. And, and he wanted them to continue to spread the word of God. And again, that he's not defeated. He knows that I, if they can't get me here, I'm going to send my, my, the next best thing. I'm going to send Timothy. And we're all called to spread this word of God. Again, our subject. Is the word of God, the gospel message. That's all of our charge. If we're if we're eight or eighty or eight or ninety, our job still is to spread the gospel. Tell everybody about Jesus, about the word of God I share with you, about in the beginning, and all the things will lead up to here that 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 this this word would put on the tent of human flesh and tabernacle with humanity. Last verse, I'm mean, last cell of our printed text is what I'm going to share with you next. I hope there's something you've learned today. It's hopefully I frame something. I hope I've given you some essence that you can understand what Paul is, is saying to us today. Next time. So we're talking about this word of God. And I'm spreading this gospel. And he says in doing this, that's our witness, right? That's we telling the people about our story. That's us telling about the story about Jesus, telling the people about the word of God. We will never be defeated either, right? And, and again, we never will be defeated if we, we put our hope and trust in God and, and, uh, and it's in, 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 in his word and not in, in our own wisdom and man's wisdom that we too have options. We have the power of God. We have the Holy Spirit residing within us that we can do greater things because of the power the Holy Spirit in now and in and dwells us. God, the whole the, the the Shekinah glory of God does not rest in houses made by man, but a little bit of that resides in us all. And we have those gifts of the Spirit, and we have the fruits of the Spirit, that love and joy, and we have that wisdom and all those 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 things, and we have the power of God, and we, we have all those things as well that reside within us, that give us the capacity to, to, to share this Word of God. And I share with you that the Word of God, again, our subject is sharper than any two-edged sword. And it's this, this power, we can do all things because of the power of the Holy Spirit that resides in us. That Jesus tells us we can do all things and this power that we have in spreading the gospel and spreading the word of God as again our subject that power endures forever that we can share it even onto our sick bed we can tell folks about this Jesus we tell just this tell people everywhere about this Jesus that's what the disciples were doing the Paul would go on these missionary journeys over and over doing one thing and sharing the word of God who he is and what he what he has for you and in one day that he will see you all in eternity that's the gospel message and we will never be defeated if we're sharing the word of god paul writes to us today to give us encouragement he's sharing and giving encouragement to the church there in thessalonica and i hope i give you a little bit of encouragement today that that you that you hope that in your end of your age that you that you will you will share god's word to whatever people and god and his magnificent uh glory will say well done you good and faithful servant that that, that and, he, and he wants to come on up to glory and he'll give us the the, an amazing eternity with himself and this redeemer Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit that will indwell us in a new Jerusalem coming at the end of our journey in this life and that is our Sunday school lesson this week and I pray that something you've learned this week strengthen your faith the world provides all your needs you learn something worthy of sharing so the master name of Jesus we do pray and ask these things always thanks so much for your time